So we're in New Mexico at one of my favorite places, uh, Navajo Lake in the San Juan River. But uh, we have a pass for the with uh, Wisconsin for the New Mexico State Parks, and the annual pass costs two hundred twenty-five dollars, but it knocks ten dollars off the price of camping here, and so. Uh, at state parks in, in New Mexico, it's $10 a night if you don't have any hookups. It's $14 a night if you have electric and water. And then it's $18 a night if you have full hookups. So for us here, we have this incredible spot that overlooks uh, you know, a, a lake, fantastic view. Um, just we're perched above it. Just it's unbelievable. There's nobody on either side of us. In fact, our whole loop is empty <laughs> today, other than us. Uh, but we can stay here 14 days, so that's what we're doing. Uh, and because of that pass, what would normally be $14 is just $4 a night. It's been great for us. But while we're here, uh, I've been working and fixing a few things in the RV that uh, needed taken care of. Uh, one of them was the bilge uh, blower, which in a boat is a bilge blower. In an RV, they just refer to it as the basement blower. But basically, it's a four inch DC fan that is uh, placed inside of ductwork so that some of your furnace air gets blown into the basement of the RV. And why that's important to us here, of course, is that, you know, it gets as, as cold as uh, 15 degrees. Hang on just a second, Gizzy's barking at it. Here we go. <laughs> so, get Gizzy all situated. Um, and so, this blower is important when you're in a place like where we are. We're at, I think, almost 7,000 feet, and at night it gets down to 15 degrees or so. And so, having that heat under there, keeps water pipes from freezing and more importantly in our case it keeps our lithium iron phosphate uh, batteries from freezing and the reason that's critical is because if you charge a frozen uh, lithium iron phosphate battery uh, it can shorten its life it'll damage it and uh, you can use the battery at low temperatures you just don't want to charge it when it's frozen so uh, I noticed one day that I didn't hear that blower motor coming on. So I had two things to fix. I had that blower motor to find out where it was and replace it. And the step cover, I'll go through that in, in a bit here. Um, but anyway, if you're not handy, uh, you know, an RV, a trailer, any kind of <laughs> camper, you're going to have stuff you need to fix in these things. You know, every time you move, it's like you're driving through an earthquake for a day. So, you know, there's always there's always something. But uh, the blower turned out to be, uh, you know, one of those things that I should have checked out before I ever ordered the replacement. So I have a replacement blower. It looks like this. And... The reason I didn't have to actually replace it was when I got into the basement on the RV and took apart the covering over the ductwork and where the blower was mounted, I discovered the reason that it wasn't working and it had been blowing fuses. So I, you know, I, I'd replaced the fuse and it still blew the fuse. Uh, so I just figured the motor had a short in it. Well, it didn't actually have a short in it. The reason it was blowing fuses was it had a mouse caught in it. <laughs> And it had been there long enough that, uh, you know, I was just scraping out dried remains. And uh, once I got what was left of the poor mouse that got trapped in there, uh, out of there, uh, it worked fine. So I didn't actually need to, be, uh, need to replace the blower. But, uh, you know, lesson learned, check it out completely first and then order your parts. But anyway, I've got a spare bilge blower for keeping the basement warm if, uh, if we need it. Uh, well, step one, you got to get everything ready, which means having an observer. Quality control agent there. <clears throat> All right, so 
I've got the step cover and the sun is shining on this viewfinder so badly I can't tell what I'm looking at. There we go. So I've got the step cover up and I've taken two bolts out that hold the actuator mechanism in place. So what I've learned is that the reason we ruined this uh, and you can see that the shaft, the threaded shaft there is bent and I could tell there was a problem because when the step would go up and down it used to be nice and smooth and then it started making a funny sound and sort of jerking its way up and down. I thought maybe it just needed lubricated but that wasn't the case. It turns out that these steps have a special mechanism underneath and uh, probably not going to show up in this light but the steps can only handle a hundred pounds the step cover if if and that's a big if and an expensive if in my case if it's not locked in place so right now there's actually no mechanism connected at all I removed a bolt here and then in the back and this just pulls out this is the new one and you can see that there's a hole on both ends that simply bolts into place and then you splice the wiring in for, for the uh, motor but here's the expensive lesson and RV lessons can be expensive not as expensive not as expensive as airplane lessons <laughs> but pretty expensive nonetheless this little parts about 400 bucks I thought I could just get the rod uh, and replace that but that's not the case so here's the deal you simply can't put any weight on the step cover unless it's locked in place and it locks in place by going actually above the full height and back down a tiny bit so so I'm gonna raise it okay and you can see I still have my finger on the button but it went ahead and shut off so now I can stand on it. It's, it's gone all the way through its whole thing and will support my, my full weight. So I'm standing on it, as you can see, 250 pounds, and it does not bend, deflect, or anything else. So, and now, when we go to lower it, you'll notice that it goes back up just a little bit as it starts to lower. And that's it shifting off of the support system. <laughs> okay, so now once it's down, the same applies. Now the step supports itself. So long story short, if you weigh more than 100 pounds, you never want to step on your steps or your step cover if it isn't fully in position one way or the other. Well, hopefully uh, I can save somebody out there damaging their step system uh, with that little video of how it's supposed to work. Just remember to hold the button in until it stops, either going up or going down. Anyway, thanks for watching.